Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I am Jerry Still, and joining me today, I've got Terry as per the usual, but we have a special guest in the seat today. Sam Carroll of the Liverpool Echo joins us. Sam, good to see you. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool accent as well, Jerry, so all good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm working. I feel like it's a uh, it's a little more. I don't know. It's a little more boring. I feel like when people find out I'm from North Carolina, they expect a little more southern. <laughs> uh, but but when I say North Carolina, it kind of comes out. You know, Winston Salem, North Carolina. So yeah, <laughs> can't help that one. <laughs> uh, Terry, you doing okay, man? Yeah, feeling good. Um, good to see you, Sam. I would say good to meet you, but we've. Uh... Yeah, before haven't we? Which which we'll sure we'll go into in a minute. Definitely, black horse L four. Mm-hmm. Hold on, you guys know each other. Yeah. Teddy. Teddy. Okay. Uh, yeah, Teddy was a customer at the Black Horse Pub where I was on a seven year seven year shift. So good, good mates essentially, Teddy, aren't we? So we are going to move. We're going to begin and talk about the U twenty three squad. So Terry. Uh, although maybe you watch every single match, we're going to start with Sam. He's our guest. Okay. The, yeah. Look at how he's, he's rankled over this. So, so <laughs> that's his rankled face, everyone. So <laughs> anyway, Sam, so, um, I'm assuming you've gotten to see the U23s a decent amount. Um, clear every single year they, they compete and they end up looking really strong, uh, some people would actually say that's that's not the best thing in the world, but we'll get into that later. Uh, so let's talk about this this Everton U23s team and uh, talk about general general play. And then if you want to start talking about players that are that are, seem to be standing out, and we'll we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, well, obviously the they won the kind of the double last season. They won the Premier League two uh, and the Premier League Cup, and, and kind of as you're saying, it looked like there was going to be a few certainly knocking on the door. Of the first team, you know, we had Lewis Gibson who impressed in pre season. He scored that goal against Mainz, um, and had a lot of people kind of talking about him. And there was a few others from that team, but you know, I think that the expectation was that it was going to kind of break up. You know, we, we've seen it over the last few years. People like Keaton Dahl uh, went out on loan, Matthew Pennington, Josh Barlow joined Hull. You know, a lot of lads kind of from that team have left or stepped into the first team, like Tom Davis, Luckman played with the under 23s, Calvert Lewin. Uh, Holgate as well for a little bit and they've all made the step up so you know then you took this group and you looked at your Morgan Feeney's and your your Markellos and your Adenarans Fraser Hornby Basala Sambu you know there was a lot of decisions to make in terms of you know do they renew the contract do they go out on loan do they work with the first team do they get sold but having another year in the under-23s didn't really seem to be the the option uh, at that time Uh, probably a, a mix of factors then um, and you know injuries included have then meant that a few lads have, have kind of ended up hanging on. Uh, I was at the game against Arsenal on Monday night at Hague Avenue. You know it was a pretty bad pitch, freezing cold. It was three all. Uh, um, but you know it, it, you, you probably wouldn't have said in the summer. You know you'd have expected to be seeing an Everton under twenty three team with Joe Virginia who joined Redden in the summer. Lewis Gibson played. Morgan Feeney played. Benny Beningami who's been on the bench for the first team this season played. Anthony Evans who turned 22 this year, he played. Uh, so so this month now kind of comes down to being an interesting month where, where people could end up kind of moving on because it is still a very a very old team in, in under-23 kind of context. Uh, I went to speak to the under-18s manager, Paul Tate, a few weeks back and, and he kind of admitted that, you know, the Premier League 2 and under-23 teams now tend to be more of an under-19 team. Uh, f- for most of the teams in the division, you know, if you think about making that step up from under-18s, and then you fill the under twenty three team with young lads. Everton's for for one reason or another hasn't, and I think that is kind of stifling that that pathway a little bit. You know, I think a uh, couple uh, of lads against Arsenal this week. You know, there's a lad called Sebastian Quirk, who scored the under eighteens last weekend. He made his Premier League two debut against Arsenal. You know, Tyler Onyango, sixteen, has really high hopes for him. He's made a few appearances this season. Ella Sims stepped up, Ina Iverson made an appearance on Monday, but hasn't had a lot of regular football at that level. So, you know, it is a, it is a big task and it, it kind of does affect the first team and it also affects Marcel Brands and, and, and Unsworth and Carlo Ancelotti as well. You know, Brands spoke at the AGM this week about, you know, brokering 70 deals since he's been at Everton and, and this doesn't necessarily 
you know, I think some people were kind of saying well, we haven't signed 70 players. But, you know, if you think about outgoings and players he's sold and then young players he's loaned out, but certainly there's there's going to be a change at, at, at that level. And I think we are now kind of seeing the, the biggest transition since when they, they first won the league under David Unsworth, you know, because that team had Dowell and Pennington and John Joe Kenny, Calvert-Lewin, Luckman, Galloway played a couple of games in that season, you know, and, and now they've all moved on. And, and that's what, what we're seeing now. Anthony Evans is out of contract at the end of the season. Lewis Gibson is out of contract at the end of the season. Morgan Feeney is out of contract at the end of the season. Yeah, and then they've also signed Jared Brantway from Carlisle this week, who was, who was watching on. So there's a real change in the, the guard at the moment. Uh, as you said, we probably will speak about it. You know, you do see a little bit of people um, questioning the way they play a little bit, or, or the style, or why more players uh, aren't getting into the first team, which is a difficult one, isn't it? I think it was heightened by the fact that we we lost to Liverpool. You had players like Nico Williams and Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott all playing, and you know Liverpool in 23s haven't been successful in terms of trophies, but they seem successful in terms of bringing players through to the next level. And I think Carlo Ancelotti kind of did admit that recently when he said he'd be holding talks with academy staff to, to kind of question why why this is the case and I think Everton probably do on the whole have to find a little bit of a better balance to start opening up that pathway because you know our academy is famous for, for bringing players through and I think I've got a piece going up tonight on the, the Echo website which kind of points out that Marco Silva was the first Everton manager since Mike Walker in 1994 to not hand a player his debut from the academy so there's been no Everton Academy graduate since uh, 2017 against Apollo and Limassol. Uh, Anthony Gordon played in that in that game, so that's why mm-hmm. he doesn't count. So you know we're, we're looking at now over two years since since we've had an academy graduate, which for for any Evertonian, uh, no matter where you're from, it's it's disappointing. Yeah, um, it does seem like with uh, certain positions being thin in the first team, you see certain players kind of peeking through. You know, uh, you mentioned Anthony Gordon has already gotten a, a day, a first team debut. However, it does seem like he's he was he's been pretty close. Uh, and you look at you know it, we've just been so thin at uh, in center mid. I know uh, Adoniran is another player that has been getting legitimate consideration with the first team and training a lot with them. Uh, are there any any other players that you're thinking like? Carlo may give a shot to, or is it a thing where a lot of the stronger players are going to start going out alone to some of these lower league uh, teams to st- to kind of, they may have talent, but maybe they need to build up consistency, like physical consistency. Yeah, I think obviously uh, I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd be very surprised if Carlo gave a debut to, to anyone this season, maybe mm-hmm. with the exception of, of a Deneran, if, if his hand was forced in, in that sense of, of injuries and the form we've had this this season towards the end of this, the campaign, maybe pr- probably now your, your Feenies and your Gibsons, you know, whether they will probably go out on loan, but only if they agree a new contract. Otherwise, it seems right because the, their contract ends at the end of the season. I'm not sure whether we'd loan someone out just to lose them at the end of the year. Uh, you know, th- th- there's a couple of lads in there, isn't there? You know, Anthony Evans. You know what a delivery he's got on him. He's got a brilliant crossing and he's a brilliant player. But he, he does now need to go out and play men's senior football somewhere else. You know, and I think it was probably around this time last year where David Unsworth himself admitted that and, and said, you know, whether it was Everton's first team or someone else's first team, he has to play first team football. And and that is still sadly not the case for Anthony. So you know, someone like him, he, he's looking to to go out now and, and and find that find that opportunity somewhere. Probably the big one, which which everyone knows about, is Ellis Sims. You know, he scored almost 50 goals for the under-18s last season and and signed a new contract. You know, there was rumours that there was, you know, interest from Germany and and clubs looking at him. And, you know, I spoke to to David Unsworth at the start of this season and and Unsworth, you know, he he wasn't included in the first years and Unsworth just kind of said, you know, you know, the the stuff he needs to work on and now he's, he's worked on it. He was doing double sessions of Finch Farm last season to work on his head and his left foot and his hold up. And these sessions are kind of continuing this season from from what David told me on Monday. But I think what's uh, what Unsworth is struggling with at the moment, you know, he kind of said on Monday night, you know, everyone will see Ella Sims scored another two goals. And, and honestly, I don't know if, you, if, if anyone's had the chance to see them. I'm sure they're on YouTube somewhere. Two fantastic goals. 
One is a, is an outside of the foot finish into the top corner. Another one, he holds his man off, runs up, runs pretty much 10, 15 yards towards goal and, and just finishes it like a striker who's, who's been playing football for 20 years. You know, brilliant goals. Really turned the game on its head and brought the game to life. But as Unsworth pointed out, everyone then sees Ella Sims scores two against Arsenal. Three and twenty three, put him in the first team, play him. And, and it's mm-hmm. it's it's not it's not quite the case, you know. Sims right. I don't right. think anyone expected Sims to probably be doing as well as he has done now. I think that's eight goals for the season. A, a, a fantastic return. You know, Everton on twenty three has lost the two top scorers last season, Hornby on loan to Belgium. A team in Belgium and Basala Sambu left on a free transfer and, and, and El Sims has stepped up, but there are definitely aspects of his game that he needs to work on. But I think the real, the real carrot for a lot of these young lads, uh, and I'd probably put Sims, Joe Virginia, the goalkeeper, uh, Lewis Gibson, if he signs a new deal. Probably put them three in the bracket of uh, if they have a strong second half of the season, whether that's in the 23s or out on loan. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd assume they'd be part of Carlo Ancelotti's pre-season squad, and what an opportunity that would be to, to put yourself in front of a three-time Champions League winner and, and, and really show kind of what you're all about. So, definite, definite excitement over them three. Anthony Gordon goes without saying, but the rest are the young lads who have mentioned earlier. You know, you've got Ryan Astley. He's a 17-year-old defender, but he's been pretty much playing at that level now for the last 12 to 18 months. Probably still a little bit too young for a loan. He'll have to keep working in the under-23s. Or you've got your lads like Anthony Evans, Nathangelo Markello. You know, we, we signed him from Holland, but probably needs to make a decision on his future and, and, and what he does next. So I kind of think that the majority of the team now is either young and developing and going to have to be nurtured by Unsworth and, and, and the young and the kind of coaching staff there or make make the decision to leave and, and start their own kind of senior career because whatever they've got, I've had too much of it over the last couple of seasons is players reaching, you know, Tyus Brown and Matthew Pennington, Keaton Dahl. They're all 22, 23, 24, 25 and still still on the books of Everton, so is there any point on, unless we're kind of, you know, it's not just uh, not good for the club to kind of have this backlog of players, it's it's not good for the player kind of going through the motions with loan deals, and which which don't always work out, you know, we've seen quite a lot of Everton in the last couple of years, loan deals aren't guaranteed to work, work, always work, or playing under 23 football, and for me, I think once you're over the age of 21, 22, you've got to start looking at either being out on loan or, or making an impression on the first team because it's, it's not always the ideal environment to be in with the 23s. All right. Uh, so, Terry, do you have anything in particular you want to address uh, uh, of the many topics that we've covered so far or if you have any specific questions? Um, like I, I wasn't sure if you had anything my, in mind in terms of conversation topics, uh, directions where you wanted to take this. I've got a couple of ideas, but I wanted to go to you first because I've spoken and you have not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'd rather hear from you, frankly. <laughs> no, not, not really. Sam's um, touched on, on pretty much anything I wanted to talk about, but um, to expand on things that... Uh, and one other thing, one a couple of the things he said. Um, obviously, Marcel Brands has outlined again in the AGM, you know, his, his sort of vision for the for how the you know, the pathway in the club and how the squad work. He wants twenty three, you know, senior players and room for some, you know, academy players to come through. So that's basically two for each position and three goalkeepers. Um, a lot of people have got a lot of frustration about how the under twenty threes don't seem to have, you know, had this massive turnaround from before Brands got here, but. Obviously, he's got to do the first team first, and he's still, I think, one summer away from doing that. I think this summer you'll see Brands probably finish the job he started when he first came in, and we'll get the rest of the senior players who aren't really in the in the plans off the books by you know by contracts being up or by sales, uh, and then obviously the, the big you know project will be the under twenty threes. Um, the under twenty threes as well can be. If yeah, you don't have to produce players to every one of them go in your first team, you know you can. It's a steady form of income because you can get fees and you know for players to go out and impress. Um, the only thing I really want Sam to expand on is what 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 have you found from you know covering them as they are speaking to David Unsworth? Have you found the sort of um, what what their take is on some of the loans that don't work out or the older lads who go out and 
like it was last season we had uh, Browning and Galloway come back and like that surely you know you've got no obligation to give them you know time and minutes because they're on bigger contracts and they've gone out to like Sunderland or whatever and they've come back and it's the same with Joe Virginia at, um, at Redden although he's you know he's a bit of a different one because he's been brought in by the current um, setup. But mm-hmm. for example, Bra- uh, Brown and Galloway, they go out, they go on loan, they don't they either don't play or they don't play enough, come back, and then they're sort of in the way of some of the newer lads who are coming through. Uh, is there a is there a take from the under twenty threes? I suppose is my question on getting these players better loans because a lot of these loans seem to happen where they go out and it's not a good fit. Like the 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 pick they go into teams who aren't going to play them or only see them as squad players and you know what ideally even if it's a lower down team you want your young player to go out and play well in another club and either come back a better player for the experience or impress enough to potentially get a move and in the club some money have the have the have they spoke about that about how the you know these loans tend to work and not work so often uh well i think to start with it's it's difficult to kind of have that you know you, you're not in a, a dream world and, and, and no club is you know if, if you go through every club not every loan works out perfectly and, and you know there's, there's also an undercurrent to, to every single loan you know because you know we, we love to kind of look and say oh he's not doing well or he's 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 doing great but sometimes when you look deeper into the loan maybe they've learned things or, or they haven't learned things that, that you might have kind of uh, supposed but I think the thing with the with the loan deals at the moment is there's definitely been a lean and now towards and, and, and even payment transfers, but looking abroad, that's definitely sort of Marcel's brought in. You know, when you look at John Joe Kenny to Schalke, Fraser Hornby to Kortreich in Belgium, uh, Benny Beningami was very close to joining a team in Denmark, which ultimately fell through. So, you know, Marcel Brands, I think, is more open to sending players abroad and, and, and that's it. Kenny at Schalke and Fraser Hornby course like both seem to be going fairly well Kenny especially uh, which is promising so so that seems to be Sutton uh, the other thing that you just can't account for is these are young lads you know Joe Virginia on paper was a successful loan because Ren loaned him and installed him as first choice goalkeeper and he started the first two championship games of the season 19 year old lad and who makes two mistakes and, and get and then gets dropped you know so that that is just pure inexperience slash unfortunate because out of uh, I think I wrote in a piece this week out of all the players who went out on loan last season I think Joe Virginia this season sorry Joe Virginia was probably the one that Marco Silva at the time probably was thinking if he goes out and has a good season he'll really put himself in contention to to be Jordan Pickford's major rival and you know it, it just hasn't quite worked out like that so I definitely expect to see a more uh, European kind of look to our loans I think Greta Steinton spoke at a, a white scout the scouting tour conference a few months back now where he kind of you know even he admitted that now this loan market isn't just about sending them to you know the traditional Wiggins and your Charlton's and your League One your League Two loans now with with the scouting tools available teams from all over the country can have really kind of top data on on our under 23 team and, and their metrics in in the under 23 so you know that that that's an avenue Everton are keen to push. It seems, which is exciting. To talk about your your kind of earlier point about brands then cleaning out the uh, the under twenty threes and and reshaping it is that I think we all kind of and and me myself included in this we all have a very kind of football manager FIFA outlook to things. Sometimes you know this summer you can sometimes sit down and you look at it and you're like right we'll sell Balassi for this much and we'll sell him and then we'll loan him and we'll loan him and it's not quite as as easy as that sometimes and and. For me, although it's not the perfect answer, I think 2021 and 2022 is when we're really going to see a regeneration of the under-23s because this is when a lot of contracts run out. Uh, will we be able to get rid of Sandro Ramirez? Will we be able to get rid of you know your Balassies and other young lads who've got pretty nice deals? You know, even you think like do many people remember Luke Garbutt is, is still on a fairly decent wage at Everton, and, and that contract doesn't expire until this summer. So I think slowly but surely we're going to get there, but we probably won't start seeing a, a, a real regeneration and, and be able to see the kind of sweeping effects of, of any changes Marcel Brands and Carlo Ancelotti want to make until maybe 12, 18 months time, which you know will, will frustrate some people and, and, and can be difficult 
Uh, the other thing you have to contend with, you know, when you're talking about older players coming back and playing for the 23s, you know, one big talking point this summer, uh, sorry, this season has been about Umani Ass playing some games for the under 23s. You know, I've seen a lot of people talking about that. You know, why isn't Sims playing? Why isn't Mampala playing ahead of Nias? What's the point? Uh, but, you know, what people don't realise is that these lads ask to play. You know, Umar asked to play in the under 23s. It was a similar situation in the summer. Mohamed Besic asked to play at Chorley on a Tuesday night against a, a non league team that had even stylists there. He has to play because these lads weren't getting minutes with the first team and, and, and they want minutes and they want to prove their match fitness. They want to keep sharp in case a club comes calling. And on the other hand as well, you need Everton to kind of... Everton still need to be savvy. If, if a team come in for Umar or Kuko this this January, they can at least say, look, Umar got minutes there and he scored there, even if it is only under 23s football. So there's, there's a lot of different things happening, what people don't always see kind of ahead of you know team news and, and what people kind of want to read into things so you know sometimes I do feel sorry for David Unsworth because he is juggling a lot it's not as simple as this lad's great for the under 18s play him this lad's this lad's a first team and don't play him it's it's not quite the reserve football that we were used to in maybe the 90s and the early noughties so there's a lot going on and there's still a lot to deal with and I think Everton would admit they, have, they haven't been perfect they haven't dealt with things perfectly and, and I feel quite frustrated sometimes because I think they've held some players' careers back and I don't mean that in the sense of I haven't in the first team but I still think there's lads there who probably could now be two or three years into a good championship or league one career if we hadn't been so uh, careful maybe I, I think what, what has really affected us is that you know Martinez was <coughs> who came in he, he, he liked the fear he brought in you know Tom Davis at the end of the day then he gets sacked you know then a new manager comes in in, in Unsworth Brought a lot of lads in from, from the younger age group. Then Sam Allardyce came in. There was that Limassol game where we handed five lads debuts. Then Marco Silva comes in. So in the meantime, uh, you know, that means we've kind of been handing people contracts, I think, personally, just because we haven't been quite so sure on them. Almost like a Harry Maguire, you know, looking back towards Michael Keane, Phil Jagielka, factor of these lads who've been released from clubs like Manchester United. And then all of a sudden, we're 30 million years later. Maybe we've been handing out contracts to say, just in case, just in case. Oh, we look quite good there. Give them a contract. Now we've got a lot of lads on deals till 2021, 2022, who are just in such an unfortunate limbo of being too good for under-23 football, but maybe not quite ready, or even just that we've got expensive players in those positions, or we haven't been in a position where you know managers at the end of the day at Everton are still gunning for short-term success. It wasn't like there was a point this season where Marco Silva could turn around and say, right, I'm going to play Anthony Gordon ahead of Theo Walcott because you know his own position was under pressure and it wasn't really the time to be to be giving people opportunities. So, you know, I see I see a lot. I see some people talking about under 23 sometimes online and it can be frustrating because I think they, they take a lot of things for face value when there's still a lot of stuff kind of going on in in the background. So you alluded to something earlier, and this question is for both of you. And this probably needs to be our last one because uh, it's beginning to swell, which, you know, it happens. Uh, every video does this. Uh, but uh, you mentioned, and not to sit there and, like, pick at wounds that are, um, you know, trying to heal at least, but you mentioned those uh, Liverpool Academy players who came in and pl- slotted in directly and uh, some have argued that they're able to slot in directly so easily and quickly because they are playing a similar style throughout their entire system. Um, I know, you know, I've gone to see, and, you know, again, this is in America, you know, I've gone to go see some of the U.S. Soccer Development Academies play, and I go and I watch... New York Red Bulls, you know, U13s play, and I talk to their parents, and they're like, yeah, they play the same style as the senior team, you know, because they're trying to keep that going. Uh, It doesn't seem like that's a direction in which Everton are necessarily headed at the moment, but that it seems like that could be a good way to get more out of out of our academy. I feel like that is a big argument that I see being made on on Twitter all over the place. Um, uh, it, Unsworth does a good job, and he wins games, and he, he's focused. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, my headphone fell out. Uh, but uh, 
he wins games, and he's focused on trying to get the best out of the players he has. But I wonder if there's a decent amount of communication between him and the first team and, you know, moving downward. So, basically, just want some comments from you guys about... Uh, it is a little bit of a dilemma, because Undorf winning games is a good thing, but... If his players are playing a similar style, they can slot right in a little more comfortably. I don't know who wants to lead on that, but uh, this will be kind of our last question. Um, I'll lead this way. But I think that's, you know, in an ideal world, that's what you'd do. But can you really identify, to Everton's first team, yet have an identifiable style? Like It's easy to point at Liverpool and say that because, you well, know, they've yeah. got an identifiable <laughs> style with an identifiable sort of... You know, manager. We change manager a lot, and we've had a massive, massive turnover of players and recycled the squad so much. I think it's a case of wanting, you know, wanting to run before you can, before you can crawl. I think we need to get this first team settled, gelled, and into a style first for like a year or two before you can then start to look at the, you know, the twenty threes and say you need to copy that. Because right now, if you're told Unsworth copy the first teams, like, well, which one? Because we played different ways all season. Yeah, on that, Terry, just. Uh... Should they have considered that when picking their first team manager? Um, yeah, probably, but I'm sure they would argue that they did. But the first mm. team manager didn't implement the style because you know we all thought uh, the, the the common thought was we're going to play four three three this season and and so on, and then one injury happens and then we suddenly abandon it and we go you know back to mm-hmm. four two three one, which wasn't working for many games and. I don't know. I think um, expecting the under twenty threes to mimic the first team when the first teams played one way under Duncan and another way under Carlo and another way under um, Silver. I mean, look at the way Ferguson had the team set up um, distribution wise compared to Carlo Ancelotti. He's got them playing around the back again. So I think it's very unfair to expect the under twenty threes to mimic the first team when the first team isn't even settled for a style, if nothing else. Terry, that's. So fair and considerate. I'm sure that Normally, they're... Terry just bashes everybody, I'm and he's just sure. being so kind right now. What's the deal? I'm sure it is the long term goal, but you know, one thing at a time. Like you can't, like Sam said, you know, twenty twenty one, twenty two might be when you know we start to see a little bit more of that because we'll be you know several years down the line of the first teams of um, redevelopment, and you know, fingers crossed, it's the same manager and there's an implemented style. Hmm. So, Sam, similar question. How are you feeling about it? I think... Or not similar, same question. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all been nicely kind of addressed uh, by Terry. Similar thinking that it is difficult, and, and in the long term, it probably is the goal for us all to kind of from, from first team down to under six, under sevens, what, what we probably have at the academy at the moment, that we all uh, look to play the same. But, but for now, uh, sometimes I think some of the... The criticism that can kind of get leveled towards Everton and the 23s and, and, and maybe even David Unsworth himself is unfair because people still forget that Unsworth has worked with Davies, Dahl, Calvert-Lewin, Holgate, Luckman, now Anthony Gordon as well. You know, he's, so he's working with these lads and he's, he's still making players for the first team and he's making players who, who are going out and having pretty successful spells out, out on loan as well. You know, so he, he's making footballers. Um, I think probably, yeah. At times, you, you can watch them and maybe think that the the performances aren't, aren't on a level of uh, kind of fluidity with with the first team. But as Teddy said, I, I don't know what that what this kind of mysterious Everton style is that everyone keeps talking about that that they should be playing. So that is obviously maybe while this period of upheaval has been going on with with a managerial many go round for Unsworth, he probably just thinks. You know, when when you go and see him, he, he demands a lot from these players. He wants work from these players. They respect him, um, but but he's also a very good man manager with them as well. Um, so I still think that, the, that there's a level of credit that that, that needs to be kind of given. I, I I also think that you know it's not David Unsworth handing out these contracts to players, and then he's given these lads and he's got to kind of work with them, hasn't he? You know, he's the one. He's still giving Beninga me. You know, they couldn't find Beninga me a deal, so he goes back to Unsworth. Same with Evans, you know. Then he's given under 18s to work with. Then he's got first team lads asking to play as well. So it's again, as I said earlier, it's it's not always what it's cracked up to be. But I definitely think, as I've said there, in the next two or three seasons, 
as frustratingly long as that might sound. I do probably think there'll be more of a um, more of an insight in the under twenty threes into maybe playing in a similar style to the first team. But first and foremost, we have to keep a first team manager long enough. So that's the that's the first concern, I think. Yeah, that's that was kind of the. Uh... And I think those are both very reasonable and uh, measured responses. I, I agree with those. Um, I think the the main thing was thinking, okay, well, if we're going to hire a first-team manager, let's make sure it's one that has a discernible style. And with Ancelotti, he usually moves into a team and tweaks things that are already in place in order to make them more successful rather than bringing, like, I don't know, uh, some of some managers they come in and it's 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 a total overhaul and they know exactly what they want to do regardless of what kind of players they have. With Ancelotti, he looks at what the players he has are and he kind of goes from there. So uh, not exactly the type of a normal type of manager that you want to uh, build a style around per se. Um, however, right now uh, that's not a criticism. I think he's a awesome manager and I'm excited to have him. <laughs> it's just, it's at odds with that kind of ideal plan with an academy. So I'll be curious to see over the next few years how this kind of develops. It does seem that patience is in order. So yeah, I feel like that's reasonable to me. I'm good with that. Plus I feel like you guys are pretty logical and I'm down with standing on your side. All right, so <laughs> so we're going to finish up. That's uh, that's the end of our U23s talk. Uh, I feel like this could have gone longer, um, but it's already long. And you know what? Sam's got to play a football game later. So, yeah, that happens. Uh, and I've got to coach one, so there's that. <laughs> so, so so, uh, so anyway, that's it for our U23s talk. Stay tuned. We're going to do a Worst of the Decade segment, so uh, hang on in there. But, uh, but now, if you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the, the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, if, you want more, if you want more Sam, check out the Liverpool Echo. Um, check out his Twitter. He'll tell you when and where his pieces will be and if he's appearing on any other uh, podcasts, uh, YouTube channels, uh, poetry contests, anything like that. He'll... He'll let you know. Um, or, if, or if you want to offer him a job, like Terry did, <laughs> definitely shoot him a DM. Slide into his DMs. Uh, also, I don't know if Terry's in the position to give any more jobs. So just want to throw that out there uh, <laughs> before anybody slides into his DMs. Uh, yeah, and check out Terry's uh, Twitter. He'll let you know. He, he also appears uh, in the Liverpool Echo, but in the fan jury. So check that out. He'll, uh, he'll drop his Everton truth bombs on there. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's all I got, guys. And I'm, I have nothing to plug other than come watch our next video. Hey! All right, everybody. Much love. We'll talk to you later. Bye.